Thank you so much, Enno, for having me. It's an absolute pleasure um, to be here with everyone as well. My name is Florence Akpan. I immigrated to Canada in 2004 for my undergraduate studies. I came as an international student and I arrived in Saskatoon, um, Saskatchewan. Uh, but I've been in Saskatchewan all this while and it's been a great experience just as going through school was absolutely great. It was a great experience. Um, finishing school and being able to find a job in my field. I'm a chartered accountant first. Um, I'm a chartered accountant and I worked uh, with the government in Saskatchewan here for 10 years uh, before going on full blown to um, manage my business, InfoPlace Canada, helping immigrants from around the world to immigrate here. So Canada is such a great country because for me, it's even allowed me to live a life beyond my dreams. I had never dreamt that I'll be, I'll own a Canadian corporation, hire people and add to the Canadian economy the way I am adding to it as an entrepreneur. And also helping other people from around the world come to Canada, helping them come to Canada and also helping Canada get the best of the best from around the world, become citizens and become permanent residents of this great country. I'm sorry, um, tell us um, about um, the immigration streams, what are the streams that are possible uh, for people to move to Canada? So some of the main immigration streams right now um, to immigrate to Canada, one of the most popular one is, um, is the Federal Skilled Worker Program. The Federal Skilled Worker Stream are for the people who are out of country and have skilled experience, have education, work experience to immigrate to Canada. So that is what that is. So if you're one of those people, you have the education, you have the language ability, you have the work experience, you would be able to come through the skilled worker program. The skilled worker program starts out at the federal level and extends onto the provincial level. So the provinces have agreements with the federal government to help, to get the provinces have their own agreements to kind of select the people they need. And what you'll find with most of the provincial programs is that they are more um, labor specific, more labor demand, labor shortage specific. So whatever provinces are inviting immigrants to come to their province, is not as open and as flexible as when the federal government is doing it. It is more restrictive, it's more tailored down, it's more specific to certain types of people. They could be looking for specifically French speakers, they could be looking for specific occupations as well. They could be looking for people who already have family members in those places to build those ties. So you'll find that um, with provincial programs, there's a little bit of that. So you have the federal, you have the provincial programs, and then of course you have family sponsorship. Family sponsorship is, um, is where uh, a family member who is in Canada as a permanent resident or citizen can sponsor their family member. The difference all the way from spouse to children to siblings, they do exist, but they all have different requirements and criteria for you to be able to sponsor. And then aside from the families, but the sponsorship programs, you also have um, you also have the uh, the entrepreneurial classes, so the business classes. So immigrants coming as self-employed, there's also a pathway for immigrants that are self-employed, but that's very specific to a certain type of knock code, for example, athletes or um, cult people involved in cultural activities who have been well established in their field internationally and world class. So you can come in as long as you know that when you come in, you're not coming to enter into the workforce, but you're probably coming to create employment, then you can potentially qualify to come as self-employed. And, and that's different from self-employed federal skill. That's a different program. Then of course you have your business investors. So people who have, I would say for the business investor, you should be worth at least 600,000 Canadian dollars and average across the country of what the minimum starting point is. What that is 600,000, be willing to invest a minimum of 200,000 in some of these provinces and location you might be able to come in through that pathway. So overall, there are actually over 80 immigration programs in Canada, permanent residence type programs in Canada that applicants can use to immigrate through to Canada, which is why most times it's difficult when the question comes, I want to come to Canada. There's so many questions one needs to ask in order to better know what the applicants would be able to qualify for and things like that. The most popular stream is the um, express entry. 
which we have the federal and the provincial. Yeah. So based on your knowledge and experience, what are the uh, important criteria for people to qualify for this um, for this express entry stream? The express entry stream is still the, the requirements for it is still the same as it was since 2015. Well, 2015 they updated it in 2017 and added additional points, but overall the requirements are still the same. It looks at the federal skilled uh, express entry looks at your age, your education, your language ability, your work years of work experience. It also looks at your ties in Canada, uh, work experience in Canada, and things like that. So most of the times, for Af applicants outside the country who don't have any ties to Canada, you really can assess yourself on four factors. Your age, your education, your language ability, and your work experience. So if you're just focusing just on express entry system, you have to have more than one post secondary education. You have to have the highest IELTS. You have to have at least a minimum of three years skilled work experience to qualify. And right now, looking at what the trends have been with the scores, you have to be like below 33 thereabouts for you to be able to meet the cutoff that is being invited right now. I'm above 33, I'm above 35. What are the chances for me? So for, for people who are above that cutoff, and again, this is just, what I've done there is like an average. If the scores continue to drop, it will widen that gap as well for people who can come in. Because the reason why age becomes an issue, I should explain that, is because when you turn 29, um, once you turn 30, you start losing points every year as you get older. By the time you're 40, you've almost lost all the 110 points that are typically allocated for age. So you, the, the sooner you get it, the better. Now, if you are older than that cut, like the, if, you're, if you've calculated your scores, you're older, and you know that even if I have three years of work experience, I have IELTS, I have um, the highest level of education, like master's, I'm still not going to be able to meet the cutoff. If that's your case, and if that's your scenario, then what you're doing is looking for provincial programs. You're going to be looking for... Um, looking at another new option. They have introduced and increased the scores for French language. So with French, you have to get to level seven of French. If you can get to level seven of French, you can add 62 points to your profile. So imagine if your score was 420 wow. or 40. <laughs> with 62, you're in, you know? So it's one of those things where it's like, don't wait, don't wait on the, on the fence, don't sit on the fence move forward because things are moving along and if you're not moving there are many people who are working on it already yeah. exactly it's become so competitive and the truth is you know somebody said oh well people from the u.s people from the from the uk people from turkey want to move to canada yes um you'll be surprised that there are a lot of american immigrants in canada yes so don't think oh you know the fact that i want to move um you know um you know it's something to be ashamed of no canada is a a truly immigrant country, right? Maybe mm -hmm. different parts of the world. So yes, it's more competitive now. More people are moving here. And the truth is at this time, you want to make sure you have at least two degrees or a master's degree. You know, you've scored the highest point in ILTS. If you can get an extra language, which is French, that would be fantastic. So I get this a lot. People saying, oh, and this is where they scam a lot of people with this job offer thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, people are asking, um, can I get into Canada with a job offer? Um, mm -hmm. require a job offer. How can I get a job outside Canada? So I want you to answer this question because this is where a lot of people usually get scammed with the fake job offer um, broad ring. One of the things that I tell people is if you did not interview for the job directly with an employer in Canada that you can verify do not pay anybody to get you a job. It is illegal to pay anybody to find you a job. In Canada, it is. Recruiting firms, and I think it's important for people outside to understand how recruitment works in Canada. If you go to a recruiting firm in Canada, they will not ask you for any money. All they'll be asking you for is your resume. So anybody who wants to find you a job in Canada should be doing the same thing. If they're doing anything different, then you're in the wrong hands and you have to walk away. 
because recruiting firms will only ask for your resume because in Canada, the company that the recruiting firm will be recruiting to will pay the employer for doing the recruitment. So you don't have to pay for a job. So that's the first thing that I would state and say, and basically, when you you see any immigration program that has to do with a job offer, it is very, very difficult to get a job from out of country. You have to, an employer would have to prove to the Canadian government that they did not find anybody qualified in Canada as a permanent resident or citizen to give a job. And I'd like to tell you too that most times, even when businesses in Canada are looking to actually hire remote from outside of the country, I've worked with a few employers, most of the time they already have the people they're looking to hire. Mm -hmm. Because the hiring process costs a lot of money, takes a lot of time, so mm -hmm. people tend to go with people they trust, which mm -hmm. is why it would be very difficult for you to just get an app, um, for you, which is why it would just be very difficult for you to just be able to apply online and just randomly get a job. It's not that it does not exist. I don't want to discourage anyone from applying, but just don't have really high expectations, especially if you're not any, you're not diff, like, your, your job is nothing spectacular, like very unique from what the skills they'll find here. I'd like to state, for people who still want, uh, like would want to try the jobs from outside of Canada, what you should be looking at is um, skilled professionals like IT, I have heard more IT people being easily recruited in from international internationally into Canadian companies. But every other skill and all of that, not so much, because that's where the priority is. After like IT professionals coming in, the next level that you're seeing are really low skilled. So like maybe hotel attendants, janitors, cleaners, and all of that. And even at the, even if you decide, oh, I've been working at the bank, I really want to come to Canada, so I'm going to become janitor you will need to prove a lot of things to be able to qualify under that. And it would mean you giving up all of the things you've accomplished, you know? So it's not as easy as a lot of people think. And please don't get scammed. Job offers in Canada are very difficult. Even people who are in here find it difficult getting jobs even if they don't already have work permits. Permits, exactly. Thank you. So you need to understand that you should have a work permit as well. So it's um don't pay anybody for job offers. The government um, you know, the government um actually charges companies for getting people outside because the companies have yeah. to prove that in the whole of Canada nobody can do that job. And trust me, so say that I'm a photographer and I'm self-employed, can I still come in? What are my chances? Yes, if you're self-employed, you can still come in either through the Federal Skilled Worker Program or the self-employment category. The yeah. self-employment immigration pathway is very unique. It's not an express entry system. There are no points attached to it, but it's for artsy people, people who are like in the arts, photography, film production, that field of people. You have to have proof that you've been do working in this field paying yourself a salary, you can be employed, you can um, you can have a full-time employment in Canada as a self-employed person when you come with that same uh, skill set of yours. So it's a, it's a very, it's a, it's a big application because you need to prove a lot. First thing first is your business has to be registered where you are. You have to have your financial statements to show that you've been doing, you have to have documentation to prove to the government that you actually have a lucrative self-employment gig going on for you to apply through that. If that doesn't, so if you don't have all of that, you could, or even if you decide to use federal skill, you, you will still need the same types of um, uh, documentation as well, but it would mean you're getting into the express entry pool and competing with the rest of the candidates in the express entry pool. Someone is saying, I have a PhD, but I'm over 50 years. What was the opportunity for me? Over 50 years, PhD. Oh, you have, you've, you've, you've maxed it out on so many levels. <laughs> <laughs> you maxed it out. You, ma you max it out when it comes to age. You maxed it out when it comes to education. In an ideal world, if you were 30, you will be here. Um, yeah. The age factor makes it difficult. So I think for that person, the chances are slim unless they have any interest in any other type of education that they want to come in through school then that could be a way for them to eventually come into Canada. Because when you come in through school, you're opened up to so much more opportunities. 
than when you're outside of Canada. Because aside from the few provincial programs that are open to people outside the country, there's a lot more that only favor people in Canada that people outside don't have access to. Someone asked a question, and I need to uh, clarify that. So, for instance, if I get into Canada and um, I get a job and I lose that job, do I lose my stay in Canada? No, you don't. No. If you're already a permanent resident. You can always change jobs, resign. Um, if you lose your job, you can get another job. Yeah. Okay. So, someone is saying, are there any chances for me to move to Canada if I don't have any family ties in Canada? Yes, there are. Yes. I, I, love Canada. I do have family here. Yeah. Uh, when I moved. So you don't need to yeah. have family before you can move in as a federal, um, you know, skilled, skilled worker. So um, we're moving into talking about school. Um, so before we talk about the school route, um, a common question that I've seen, um, you know, I don't have work experience yet, or I'm in my final year, or I just graduated, I'm doing my youth service. Um, mm -hmm. What are the opportunities for those kind of people who don't have... Um, who don't have the years of experience. So in terms of not having enough experience, you just have to wait to get the experience because having that skilled work experience is required for express entry. You have to wait to have that skilled experience in order for you to be able to qualify to apply for, for the express entry, basically. So it's really, really important to actually um, make sure that you have that qualifying work experience so that your application can go through. Like I said earlier on, one year is not really cutting it, so you might have to wait. And like, but get into the express entry system. Don't get me wrong. Even if your score is low, get in. So what I'm saying is, even if your score is low and you're thinking about Canada, please don't worry. Get in the express entry system and try to update it as you go along. As long as you meet the minimum requirements, get in. Because anything can happen in any province. COVID has changed a few things. So meet the minimum criteria and get yourself in the express entry pool. When you get in there, ensure that you select all provinces as your province of choice if you're open to them, so that it increases your chances of actually receiving an, an invitation to come. 